And I I pray that I won't I won't get I say too fired up. I just when the Lord gives me word, I get fired up. I don't know about you. When the Lord moves for me, I get fired up. Yes, and I told I told Jen uh, <clears throat> that uh, I got the Lord dealt with me some early Saturday morning, early early. So I had to get up and begin to write it down and I it's a blessing I ain't nobody and I'm not saying that uh, the Lord don't talk to other people but um, it's amazing how God will work and I, I, I want to say this to everybody that's here and that um, you're going to begin to see things that's going to happen Sister Wynita that you never would have never dreamed that this um, that uh, um, I reckon what I'm trying to say you fixing to see the impossible come to be possible <coughs> that's what I'm telling you you're going to be able to begin to see things and uh, Jesus makes this statement in the gospels and I talk about the gospels a lot but he said there's going to come a time that I'm going to do a separation. That I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats. And I, and I want y'all to understand this. Very, this is very important what i got to share today. And I'm going to do my best. Put brakes on a little bit where I can teach it, preach it, whatever God allows. <clears throat> goats were used in the sacrifice in the old covenant as well as sheep. It was the goat that they would pray over the sins and send him out to the wilderness called the escape goat that would send out those the sins to the wilderness of, uh, for, for, for Israel. Let me get my stuff started here. Anyway, um, but what I want you to be on the spiritual side of this thing, there's going to be separation coming. And when I say that, that's not an arrogant thing. Um, <clears throat> when the centurion said this about the Lord when he gave up the ghost, and the Bible said that the earth quite came, that the that that the, the in the cemetery that the graves opened, and and that God's people come out of the graves and, and walked in and, and to the holy city. It was when he said, this must be the son of man. This must, everything that's been proclaimed must have been happening. And what you're going to find out in the next just little bit, you're going to find out people's going to begin, uh, Sister White need to begin to cleave to you when they wouldn't before. And they're going to start having a tentative ear of what you've got to say because there's going to be a separation of what they've been hearing of what they should have been hearing, and I don't know no other word to say, but the Lord said he would separate because, see, a goat will eat anything. Right. But it's the strict diet of the sheep because Jesus said the sheep would know my voice. Right. A sheep is going to wait, and the sheep will fast. A sheep will refuse to eat if it's not the right food that it said it's supposed to eat the right grass. I, and I, I want to share that with you today. I want you to understand. So for us... And again, I'm not putting any of us on a pedestal by any means, but people that uh, Jesus said this comment that God was a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. We, we, we talk many times about the Holy Ghost. We talk about the baptism of Jesus Christ. We talk about repentance, which I'm going to share some things with you today because it's going to set you apart. Amen. That when you begin to speak, just like when Jesus spoke in, in, in the Gospels, and they said, this man has has word, but it's a word of authority. Right. It's separated of what I've used to hear from the Pharisees, what I'm, I'm different hearing from the ordinary church. Right. So I, I want to share some things with you that the Lord uh, 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 just put on me, and, and I, I want to say this to you that that you know you can do it you know i say we well, you know what when the lord deals with me and when i know it's something specific i sister karen can literally just sit down and, be, and listen sister uh shelly and i can just begin to write 
And once I write it, I go back and, and get confirmation through the word to make sure that I heard everything that I, I'm pretty sure what I heard. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I write it down and I go back and I find my scriptures and that's why it looks so jacked up because then I, I have to dot in everything he spoke to me even in my dream that I go back and I and I put the scriptures with every, everything that I heard that when I give it to you, I've given you scripture. I didn't give you my opinion of what I thought I heard, but I give you literally the scriptures of what I, I, I he has spoke to me. I, so I, I want to I want to share this with you today. It's important that it's it's coming and it's here if you would just embrace it. I, I don't know. I don't know, Sister Alicia, how I can explain it any more better than that. But don't be amazed when people begin to cleave to you. But I will tell you this, you're going to be at fault if you can't feed them. Come on, come on. Because they're going to be hungry for something and it's going to be up to you because you have the knowledge and the truth and the revelation of wow. Jesus Christ. Wow. And Jesus asked this question, Do thou lovest thou me? And if you love us, thou me, then feed them. Mm -hmm. If you love me, EST, if you love me to the extreme, yes. you'll make sure that you prepare to feed them. You know, Peter dug a hole in that conversation. He said, Lord, thou knowest all. Yes. So you know me, in other words. Mm -hmm. You know that I love you. Well, that's exactly right. I know you do. Well, then do what I've asked you to do then, if you say you do. Yeah. But then what I've asked you. So I I want to share a few things, if you allow me to share these things. And I may, I'm going to have to build a little foundation here. But please, I want to talk to you today about the carnal man works. But I also want to talk to you today about this, the difference between that and the spiritual man works. Because we, we don't do carnal works anymore. Okay, so I want to go to Revelation, if you will, with me. Uh, Revelation 20, or excuse me, chapter 20. And I, I, I will read this, and I'll, I'll you see it. But I would pray that you have pen and pencil today and, and, and paper to write some, some scripture down and listen how important this is. Remember, I've said this before, that the Hebrew nation, the Hebrew uh, customs, they did not do anything without purpose behind it. The Lord in this word did not do anything without purpose behind it. So I want to I want to read in verse 11 and 12 because this is very important in Revelation 20. Uh, some people misinterpret it and I'm not telling you I'm a theologian that the Lord took me back in time like he did John uh, the Revelator put him on the island of Patmos. I, ain't, I have not visited that. But I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on Revelation when the Lord himself told you I'm just as simple. This is simple. Don't complicate it. And John said, I saw a great white throne and, on, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the small, and the great stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead was judged out of those things which were written in those in the books, according to their works. And I want to talk about that today, those works. Very important. Lord God, as we come before you, Lord God, I just thank you and I love you so much, Jesus. I thank you for your word. I thank you for who you are, what you are, Lord. And again, I would ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be upon me, Lord God, as I try to preach, teach, whatever it is that you allow me to do for a few minutes, Lord God. Lord, I just pray, God, and I thank you, Lord God, for using me, Lord. But Lord, let the ear be clear today, God. Let the heart, Lord God, not be letting that nothing be in our mind. Lord, that, we, that it will hinder us for receiving today, Lord Jesus. Uh, I know that some's not here, but some will be able to see it on video, Lord God. Uh, on the 
YouTube thing, Lord Jesus, or hear it on the radio, Lord. But Lord, I know that, that you beginning to separate your people, Lord. Lord, there's beginning to be a turn in this thing, and your word teaches us to be prepared for it. And I want us to be prepared, Lord God, to bring in your harvest, Lord. In these last days, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I know that I've got Old Testament, New Testament. I've got the day of Pentecost and I've got this apostolic doctrine. I don't, Sister Karen, I, I believe that they, they's just one, one doctrine. This is the way I believe it. I, I don't believe there's 25, 35, or I think there's, what, 218. They may have done grown by now doctrines now. I believe that there's <laughs> one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's just... Church, that's just the way I believe it. Right. But I, I wanna, I wanna, if I can for a moment, I, I wanna, I wanna lay a quick foundation. Amen. To preach you something, I pray that you need to understand to equip yourself with. I, I know that, I know that, that the Lord started out with the old, the Old Testament. Then what do we know about Old Testament? Amen. We know that there were six hundred and thirteen laws in the Old Covenant. Amen. The Old Testament in Leviticus. We know, I looked it up, and I was told at one time it got up to 2,400, but uh, the, 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 the brother that told me that, I, I believed him, but I couldn't. I couldn't go back and find it in my stuff, but I found that there was 1,050 more added the time, the, new, the time it got to the New Testament. And, I, and I've said this many, many times to people that have struggled, have struggled many doctrines, Churches have struggled with this in the New Testament, and I and, and you may not want to believe it like me, but I, I got chapter and verse of what I'm talking to you about. And you're gonna find out that even in the New Testament, even in the New Testament, they still was trying to convert folks from the Old Testament, the old way, the old covenant. I need you to understand after the day of Pentecost. When the apostles, amen, come on, on scene, amen, after the day, after the speaking in tongues, after the filling of the Holy Ghost, after the upper room, and they, and they, they become apostles, Sister Karen, they went, amen, into a world that was strange of a doctrine of Jesus Christ. I need everybody to understand that. For some mind, for some reason in our mind today, we think that everybody knew that there was a New Testament in the old times. Amen. Even when uh, Paul uh, uh, went to, to Ephesus and, and different places uh, 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 preaching the word, uh, everybody is thinking, amen, well, my God, they had church, they had these things on that book that I give you, amen, the Haley's book, if you would just go back and read the history of church, you're going to find out, amen, they weren't nothing but renegades, they weren't nothing but heathens, amen, they were starting to build churches, they were starting to put churches in place, so I want to give you some, some, some things that you may or may not know, and it's all right if you don't know these, it ain't going, it ain't going to hurt you, but hold on to them. We know that the number of man is six because, because on day six is when man was born. This is old covenant, what I'm giving to you. But it plays out. We're going to find out. Slam, Sister Karen, into Revelation, amen, because of six, 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 uh, the mark of the beast. We know that. Uh, amen. These numerical numbers, amen, are important uh, that we hold on to these and understand them. You know, I um, uh, mean, Mother was talking yesterday, you know, and Wanting to hold on to that scripture in Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Amen. And I, I just, this is what the Lord give me. Is This is what I want to give back to you. If you hold on to this. I want to do the number 7 next. We know that's the number of perfection. This is the day, seventh day that the Lord rested. The, the Lord went back and looked, amen, on what he had done the prior six days. Amen, that's what makes it the perfect day, amen, the, the, the perfection, amen, because everything he done, Sister Karen, from day one to day six was in perfection. He didn't have to take the seventh day. Uh, uh, Sister Alicia and go back and fix something because he had messed it up. Uh, right. Amen. The rain didn't wash it away, so yeah. to speak. Uh, amen. But that seven, uh, I want y'all to understand when you get in. 
Amen. The Torah. Amen. The, 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 the five books. The first five books of the Old Covenant. Amen. Where we get the law and all. Amen. One of, of, of the laws is ever seven years. Amen. They were not allowed to plow their fields. So ever seven years they was not the church able to plant. It was a law that the land rest. Amen. Because again God rested. Amen. And then when you think about this, uh, how in the world, uh, amen, did they eat, uh, Sister Wadden, into that seventh year, amen, but the Bible teaches and tells us, uh, amen, that because they let it rest, uh, and again, remember last week when I told you if we'd ever get, uh, amen, the revelation of the word obedience, uh, you would be surprised what God does. But the Bible says on the seventh year, amen, when they would not plow the field, not half of the word, we just, uh, 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 Jess, you don't realize what you just said, amen, about faith and about being worried, amen, and about what you taught today, amen. They didn't have to worry about feeding the cattle, Sister Alicia. The Bible says, amen, because they had planted them previous six years, amen, they were still seed in the ground, and it would come up voluntary, amen, to sustain them the seventh year that they could rest. I need y'all to hold on to this for a moment. Again, it's time to get obedient. It's time to have obedience. It's time, amen, if we're going to be called the children of God, amen, he said if the spirit was in you, uh, and in Romans, uh, he said if my spirit's in you, and I'm paraphrasing that scripture, uh, uh, I'll be your God, and you'll be my sons and daughters. Do y'all remember that scripture? Amen. amen. And I, I just want y'all to, to understand, I, I got to lay this, amen, for you to understand where we're going today. Amen. And I need you to understand even when we get into the New Testaments, the Gospels, amen. That was the big fight with Jesus. And that was the big fight with the Pharisees. Because when Pharisees was holding church to the old covenant. Amen. And I'm telling you something. You better listen to me. These ways that you're holding now ain't going to hold mustard, amen, in a few, uh, just a few moments from now. Right. I, I'm going to leave it like that. People are accustomed, amen, to that. Amen. And I'm telling you something. Satan is accustomed to that. Amen. And when you talk about the hard things come by prayer and fasting, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not willing now, amen, to go ahead and get your feet, amen, and go ahead and get them in the ground and put in a place, amen, because there has got to be a difference, Sister Juanita, amen, between us and the charismatic church. I'm talking to you right now. Anybody can raise their voice. I'm raising my voice right now, Sister Alicia. I've got a tie on and a white shirt. But that don't make me an anointed preacher. Amen. What's going to make me an anointed? Amen. That I see the Lord's face. And my desire is that he live in here. And I keep this temple, amen, to where he can use it. Amen. For his glory, church. Amen. I'm going somewhere. Just hold. Watch this. Very important. Amen. I just got a lot. Amen. That. I want to share, amen, and I need you to understand this. Amen. When Jesus come out of the grave right here in, in the Gospels, amen, and he told Mary that he could not touch, excuse me, yeah, Mary Magdalene, could not touch him for his body had not been glorified yet. Amen. And the Bible tells us in Acts 1 and 3, amen, 40 days. 40 days, amen, infallible proof that the Lord did. And he began to allow them to touch him, amen, and show his scars and the things that he did. Here's you some, here's you some of this Hebrew, amen, not tradition, but their ways, church. 40 is very important, amen, because 40 is when a man could leave his dad and start a new generation, a new thing, amen. He could leave his dad then and have him start his own family. That is Hebrew tradition. That is Hebrew customs, church. And I need you to understand this. When Jesus said, don't touch me yet, amen, because his body had not been glorified. But once the body was glorified, there was going to be a new thing, a new work. There was going to be a day of Pentecost. There was going to be a reckoning that the old man could go down in water and come up a new man. There was going to be a washing away of sin. There was going to be an infilling of the Holy Ghost. There was going to be a new thing. But the flesh could not touch something and not be glorified yet. All right, man, right. Them numbers is important. 
ain't got to the good one yet. Sister Shelley, they think we're fanatics because they ain't got no revelation. But when you get to this day of Pentecost thing, mm -hmm. that penta means 50. Right. But I got to go back in the old covenant. Them 613 laws that's in Leviticus and find this penta. This day 50. Talking about 50 years. Talking about the day of Jubilee. This is the day of liberation. Every 50 years, the old covenant. Amen. They was liberated. What does that mean? That means that they become dead free. I need you to understand this. Anything that was owned, any slave that were bought, sometimes the Jews were so poor. Sister Alicia, when you read that, it's good to be in the theological side of things because you appreciate what you got today. Right. They would have to sell themselves just to eat. Right. Amen. But when the day, when 50 years come by, church, right. when the 50 years come by, everything went back to naught. Right. It was liberation. The Jews that were in slavery because of them being poor, whatever it might be the cost, a man might have might have got more debt than he could use or could, could could afford and he would have to take his children and give it to the debtor, amen, because he could not pay, amen, his debt. I need you to understand this. In the old, it was liberation, amen, the day of Pentecost, when that mighty rushing wind come, when the Lord told them to tarry, we have got liberation. We have got liberation when Peter said to repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for your remission of sins and you shall receive, amen, the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want you to understand we are liberated today because of the day of Pentecost. Amen. We are liberated today because the Lord didn't allow Mary Magdalene to touch him and said his body had not been glorified. A new work's coming. A new thing is coming. I want to share some things with you because I want you stirred today like I am stirred. In Acts 13, 39, and Acts 15 and 10, Amen. This is where the argument and the discussion is. Uh, where Paul and Peter, amen, begins to talk to the Pharisees, begin to talk to Jerusalem and tell them that Moses' is law, amen, ain't working, amen. It's too, it's too stringent. It's too, it's too, uh, uh, what's the correct word I'm looking for, amen. Amen. You, we just, you can't handle it. The yoke is too great. Amen. This is a new work. Amen. The Lord's liberated us uh, from the old covenant church I, I, I want to I want to make sure I do this right and, and, and don't don't get a, get ahead of myself amen that I, I want you to understand the importance of, of who we are and what we are I want to I want you to understand I know that, Sister Juanita, we get back in this old stuff. We, we, we got old and it's brought into the new, but we know in Isaiah it was prophesied that a Messiah was coming. Am I right? And that what was prophesied? Amen. Amen. But yet they still was living in old times. And Sister Karen, I, this is again where my spirit is grieved. We still live in 1980s, 1970s, 60s. Uh, we'll go 1990, year 2000, whatever you want. Uh, amen. We we still in this retrospect in our mind uh, that, that, that when we leave here today, amen, and I'm just being as honest as I can, we think next Sunday we'll be back. Right. Right. We think that. We think that Sister Karen, we're going to come in here Wednesday night and pray again. We already got that in our subconscious mind. We may not be back Wednesday. That's true. Oh, yeah. 
But see, the Pharisees and all of them were in the same boat. They hold it on to that last thing, but yet prophecy. Mm -hmm. The word has already came forth that the Messiah is coming. Going to deliver us all. It's already been preached in Revelation of, uh, or even in the Gospels. However you want to do it, Matthew 24, Mark 13. However you want to do it, Luke 21. Well, however, you, however, you, however you want to receive it, even into Revelation, Amen. The things that's coming to pass, the things that the Lord has set in order for you and I. I'm not a fanatic, but what I'm telling you is this. Amen. I feel in my heart some is going to be caught sleeping. That's true. That's true. And, and, and they're going to be, Sister White Needy, in trouble because we, we as a people, that's been baptized. Acts 2.38. We have been liberated. That's right. We have been liberated. I don't have any debt anymore. I understand the debt has been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. I understand that his name is applied to my, my forehead. I want you to understand in Romans. Amen. Let me just read something to you because... I got some scriptures to back up everything that I breathe to you people today. The Lord has given me much to say and I'm trying not to get too loud and too, too, too whatever with it. But I, I want to read you some things. When you get into Romans chapter 3 verse 28, I would like to read this to you. This is where a stump becomes to get in the road. Amen. Of and if I were to say Baptist doctrine or Methodist doctrine or or I, I'm going to go seemingly God because this Trinity thing just blows me away. Amen. And we want to get Sister Shelley and I'm just being as honest. Church of Christ, it doesn't matter. So many people are set in their ways the way they want to believe. Right. And they cannot. They cannot. Sister Karen, I want you to listen to me. The reason they kept, why they, they, they brought the old, <coughs> Sister Alicia, they brought it, they keep bringing it across. The old is no good anymore. Jesus said, I come. I come not to destroy this, nor the prophets, but I come to fulfill this right. across yes. here. Yes. And that's the revelation that you need because what he said that Paul wrote us in Romans. He said in Romans this, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, without the works of the law is what that means. Is he the God of the Jews only? Or is he not also for the Gentiles? Yes, the Gentiles also seeing it is one God which shall justify, justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Now look at verse 31 of, of chapter 3 of Romans. Do we then make void the law through faith? It's a question mark. And then Paul says, God forbid we do it that way. But yea, we establish it. Uh, yes. We establish this walk. Amen. These laws, these 2,000 whatever laws it may be that they brought from the old coming this way. These are not going to be weights that help hold me back and hinder me again. I've read it to you in chapter Acts 13 and in Acts 15. These are too weighed down for us. We cannot bear this. But if I've been liberated and I've got revelation, amen, I'm going to cling to him. Because if you love us by me, amen, you're going to feed my sheep. If you love us by me, you're going to hold on to me. And you establish all of this over here. It will be established how? Amen, because you won't be tempted. I read it to you in James. You won't go back to the lustful things of the world. Right. But you will hold to that unchanging oh, hand yeah, today. Yeah, That's yeah. what I want to try to preach to you for a moment. But he goes on to say this. And, and, and uh, I got some more. But I, let me, let me, I'm going to try to do my scriptures if y'all hold with me just a minute. Because I got some stuff, good stuff here. But in Romans 8, 
It says, moreover, in verse 30 and 31, moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. And what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's the difference, uh, Sister Alicia. That's not being arrogant. What I'm trying to get you to understand, and I probably should have pulled the scripture where Jesus said he was going to separate the sheep from the goats. In this thing, there's coming a time. Amen. He told us that. Amen. Even in, even in Mark, um, uh, Matthew 24, they would be two. Amen. Doing what? Working in the field. One would be taken right. and one would be left. Yes. There'll be two yeah. grinding in the mill. Yes. One would be taken, one would be left. I mean, be two in the bed. Same thing. Right. Amen. I'm telling you right now, he's beginning to separate. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but he's beginning to separate. Make a, they're fixing to be a separation. Oh, really? Amen. The people that loved him, that know him, and we're going to do exploits for him. I'm trying to get you somewhere. If you just listen to me for a moment, you won't walk in fear, but you'll have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Who that he says, if God be for us, who shall be against us? Can come, excuse me. If God be for us, who can come, who can be against us? Yes, I'm saying it right. Amen. And I'm telling you, you'll walk in confidence. Amen. And redeem the time that you and I are supposed to be doing today. Am I making sense so far to you? Yes, yes. Hold on to this. I got to go a little bit further because I want to I want to share some things that's been stumping, folks. In Galatians, if you want to go there for with me real quick. And I and I know I know this may be a lot, but it's just the truth. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, we, we've read this every, I pray you're reading your Bible. Knowing that, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by, by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we believe in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. And by the works of the law shall no flesh. Amen. This is what Paul is telling you about that flesh. <laughs> Amen. You won't be justified. Now I just want you to move over one chapter to chapter 3, verse 24. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmasters to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified, amen, by faith. Amen, and I just want to, amen, and it says in 27, for as many as you have been baptized in Christ, have put on Christ. Amen, and that's something that I said last week. Amen, to what Brother, uh, Brother J. 